I'm just a little person. One person. Synecdoche, New York, is the story of a theater director named Caden Cotard. He lives with his wife Adele and their young daughter Olive. When Adele leaves for Berlin and takes their daughter with, Caden begins to battle with his feelings of inadequacy and sense of self worth. All the while, his ever growing hypochondria consumes him further. You're a doctor, right? Am I dying? Can you tell me that? No. No, you, you can't tell me? I can't tell you. No, you can't tell me if you can't tell me. No. This video comes in two parts, the first being an analysis of the film and what I take out of it, the second in an examination of the release of this film, how it failed at the box office, and why that is. The second part will be uploaded at a later date. Warning, spoilers ahead. When you're watching a film, it's easy to sort of disengage and just let the movie play out passively watching from the comfort of a movie theater or your living room, but every single piece of a film is constructed. Sometimes accidents happen that are left in, but typically speaking, what you're being shown in a film is a series of careful decisions made by a team of people to present information about the characters the story follows and the world they inhabit. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the opening scene of the film. The film starts on a black screen with Olive singing a song for Schenectady. The opening shot falls on a clock, Caden in bed as the radio plays in the background. It's the first day of fall, and a college professor is being interviewed on why so many people write about it. It's seen as the beginning of the end, really. If the year is life, then September, the beginning of fall, is when the bloom is off the rose and things start to die. It's a melancholy month, and maybe because of that, quite beautiful. The beginning of the end. Caden, who according to the screenplay is 40 at the start of the film, is reaching the fall of his own life, where the bloom falls off the rose and things start to die. We're confronted with the main theme of the film right at the start, death. The radio, his magazine subscriptions, the choice of newspaper section all serve to tell us who Caden is, something explained in a beautiful scene of exposition near the end of the film when Ellen Baskin auditions for the role of Caden after Sammy's suicide. Caden is a man already dead. After all, his name comes from the neurologist Jules Cotard, who first described the Cotard delusion, a mental illness wherein the afflicted believe themselves to be dead. And it's not just his name that bears a greater significance. Take the name Olive. Historically, the olive branch represents a symbol of peace, but in the story of Noah, it has a bit of a different meaning. A dove was sent from the ark and returned with an olive branch, symbolizing the end of the Great Flood. Psychology tells us that green is associated with spring, the color of renewal and rebirth. Her name and what her character represents is the antithesis to his greatest fears. While his life is approaching autumn with all of its death and decay, Olive is in the spring of her life, still unburdened by time and by loss. Even though he's mired in this fear of death, she stands in opposition of that. She serves as the catalyst for the turning point of the film, when that light was taken from him, we see everything in his life begin to fall apart. Without that wellspring of hope to draw from, his life begins to drone on, living in a sort of fast-forward haze split between work, hospital visits, and funerals, of which there are many. Despite his constant bemoaning of pain and concern for his health, he outlives almost every other major character in the film. He outlives his parents, Adele, Olive, Hazel, Hazel, by the way, is another character whose name carries a deeper meaning. Hazel is a shade of brown, which is a color associated with earth, stability, comfort. Hazel is also a plant that produces the hazelnut. In folklore, the Celts believed the hazelnut to carry wisdom and to offer inspiration or even protection. Hazel is the one woman I think he ever truly loved, but he lacked the courage to ever speak his mind with her. Bad timing certainly put a damper on things, but mostly it's Caden's own anxieties that prevent a relationship from blossoming until the very end of the film, and of her life. Let's examine a verse from one of the original songs written for the film, titled Song for Caden. And so you build up layers of deception, and you leave out things to alter the perceptions of the ones you love who would never love you back, if they knew all about you, every solitary fact. He hides himself away, too neurotic to function like the rest of the world. He builds up these layers of deception out of the fear that no one will love him for who he really is. The only way he knows how to reveal truth about himself is to do so on a stage. Look at this scene where Sammy is with Claire. 
Sammy is the voice of Caden's thoughts, being brutally honest in a way that Caden never could out of fear, and he eagerly watches her reaction to his words, but backs down as soon as Sammy goes too far. I thought it, but I didn't say it. He lives as a man with one foot already in the grave, hurtling towards oblivion, desperately clawing at some element of truth but growing too ambitious with his ideas to ever reach it. On the other hand, we have Adele, whose art grows smaller each year until one requires magnifying glasses to even see her work. Her name, Adele Lack, serves as an observation of her art that it lacks the size or scale of almost any other work out there, but to me her name is quite literally meant to be taken as what Caden is lacking from his own life. The success she attains, the freedom with which she lives her life, the response she gets from the artistic community, the bonds she forms with other people, are all things that Caden lack, at least in his own opinion. They are complete opposites in almost every observable way, and it's represented most notably in their choice of career. Theater is inherently a collaboration, a piece of art born new every time it's performed, changing with each audience or cast or crew, and it's why theater sees so many reproductions of established works year after year, because those working in theater are seeking to discover something new within something old. Adele's world is all about exploring something new, breaking new ground and redefining boundaries. It's about self-exploration on a very intimate level, a moment shared between her and her subject captured on the canvas. In her world, merely to have technique isn't enough. You may be able to reproduce a work of art on a technical level, but your work will never adorn the walls of a museum. Instead, it will sit on a clearance shelf in some retail chain. These philosophical differences on life and art and parenting is what leads to their separation. Adele sees Caden as a negative influence and seeks to remove Olive from that influence, something we saw illustrated in the first eight minutes of the film. That's what good writing looks like, set up and pay off in ways that only become clear as the film unfolds. All of those little moments early on carry much more weight once we know the way the film progresses. Something as small as Adele correcting Caden in the car shows us her sense of superiority over Caden. Or how about the first time we see Adele on screen? She's coughing. Something that holds greater significance as she dies of lung cancer later in the film. In the opening of the film, we get another seemingly insignificant moment what? that tells us a lot about Caden. You sure it's all right? It's fine, Olive. Just, just flush. What if it's alive? What if I kill it? It's green. It's, it's not alive, honey. God, remember the it's production it's of The alive. Dumb Waiter? I did it all many he brushes off concerns for Olive in favor of discussing himself. It's something he goes his whole life ignoring, how self-centered he is. It's only during Sammy's speech that he's finally confronted with the concept of how little empathy he has for anyone other than himself. I've watched you forever, Caden, but you've never really looked at anyone other than yourself. So watch me. Watch my heartbreak. Watch me jump. <laughs> it's why he envisions himself in cartoons or commercials, why books seem to write themselves around him. Even some of the editing informs us of this. Time is everything in film, and what you choose to spend time on is what tells your story. Spending more time on something is what gives it more significance. So what happens when Caden disappoints Hazel and we see her perspective? Her pain is only felt for a few frames, yet we spend an obscene amount of time showing Cadence. Yes, he's our main character, largely our POV character, but it still tells us something substantial about how he considers others' emotions. Or rather, that he doesn't. Caden is so preoccupied by every other thought regarding himself and himself alone, and that is the reason why he never connects with people the way he hopes to, and why I don't feel much pity for the fact that Adele left and took Olive with. It's why his goal of portraying a city of people, none of whom are an extra but a lead in their own story, ultimately fails and never even reaches an audience. Caden. What? When are we going to get an audience in here? It's been 17 years. In his final days, the play collapses around him as he finally learns to truly see through someone else's eyes, through Ellen, the maid, cleaning Adele's apartment like he used to clean their house. Throughout the film, we see Caden reach out for help. Look at these first flirtations with Dad. Hazel that we see anyways. In fact, Hazel, you're very bright, and I love your eyes.
fact that he's really very bright. Oh, am I? <laughs> and I love your eye. Do you? Oh, <laughs> darling. Then what do I say? I can't say what then you say. Why? He always wants to be able to say something real and something personal, but he can never quite climb that wall that he has built up around himself. Just tell me what to do. Caden, everyone has to figure out their own life, you know? In his final days, he learns to let go and open himself up to someone completely other to him, living out his end with an earpiece, with a constant feed of her thoughts and her instructions. In my opinion, that's the significance of the end of the film, when the bombs go off and the play begins to dissolve. In the end, he learns that to truly know oneself takes sacrifice. You have to tear down your walls and allow yourself to be vulnerable. Sammy and Ellen help him see who he is for who he is and not the man he wishes to be. But it's only after taking on Ellen's role that he fully crosses the threshold to true understanding. To quote Father John Misty, that's how you live free, truly see and be seen. He has no need for the play anymore. All of the truth that he hoped to find through putting on this play found him instead through Ellen and through his eventual willingness to truly see and be seen. Kaufman is always exploring themes about humanity and doing it in an incredibly personal way, but also in an ambiguous way. He refuses to accept that a movie has to follow a certain structure or set of rules to carry a message with weight. That the right audience who's willing to participate will find something special and powerful within the film, and only more so upon subsequent viewings. It's a surreal look at a man desperately trying to find purpose and never quite attaining it. The second part to this video will be released in another couple of weeks. I'll be sure to link to it here with an annotation, as well as putting a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support my channel, you can either support me on Patreon, or you can like and share this video to help more people see it. Any help is always greatly appreciated. Also, if you have some time to spare, my friend recorded an album that is absolutely incredible. The whole album is free to stream on Bandcamp or right here on YouTube. So if you like the song you're hearing right now, I'd highly recommend checking it out, or the music video that my brother directed that goes with it. All the links will be in the description, and there will also be an annotation on the screen that links to the music video. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.